You know, the generation I come from is a little bit more musical than the generation that's here now. And I think it's due to technology, the way things are being produced. A lot of music don't have a lot of heart and soul in it no more because it's, it's not really being made by human hands, it's being made by computers. I think this is my chance to kind of bridge the gap. I got fast cars, bad bitches, and it's on the close. Couple thousand on my wrist, and my neck is on froze. Spanish bitches butt naked, and they twerking on the stove. Too much racks in my pocket, and my wallet can't fold. The reason why I even got into music is my mom is a choir director, my dad's a preacher, so that means we at church, you know, four days out the week. You know, as a child, you need something to do, you need some involvement, you know, to keep you, you know, excited about where you're going. If I'm gonna be here at church, I wanna do something. I started off playing the drums, and it seemed like every boy in the church wanted to play the drums. I see one nobody really trying to play the keyboard or the organ, so I start, you know, migrating over to the organ and, and, and the piano and start learning that. And I just got addicted to it. The sound that I developed through just working over the years, a lot of people take it as the Zaytoven signature sound is the piano. It used to be the organs. I used to rev up the organs in my beats and everybody like, oh, this is the Zaytoven sound. I think when I did a project with Future is when I really used a lot of pianos. And it was just me kind of trying to separate myself from all the other, other producers. I didn't really know about Lil Pump. I didn't know that much about his music or who he was, but my son knew. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be keeping up with what's going on. So when he called me, I automatically knew who he was. Oh, you little pump, you the one my son been talking about. I need to work with you, I can't wait to work with you. So I, you know, I go back and listen to him and, and see what he's on, then I create beats that I felt like that'll fit him. And you know, I was right on the money. My first step in creating this designer beat, I start off with the pad, you know, just to kind of get the groove going. It was a pad that came out of the plug-in Omnisphere. I feel like it brings a certain racing feel. It just kind of like, feel like it's building up to something. It's subtle, but then it's kind of mysterious. It's like, okay, what's gonna happen? You know, it gives you that type of feeling. Now, after I use this pad, now I think about sounds that I can just add to kind of sprinkle on top of it to kind of bring some different elements to the beat. So what I added in next was a bell sound. I love to use bells because bells are not harsh. They just tickle your ears a little bit. They just, you know, add some different flavor. So just something about bells that make it be like, okay, this is a, a trap beat. Since I'm so old school, I really don't add a lot of effects. I don't add a lot of stuff to change the real texture of the sound. And I move fast. So that means I don't have a lot of time to, you know, manipulate the sound or change it or, 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 or make it sound different. After I got me two good full sounds in a beat that I feel like can set the mold, then I start adding drums. Sometimes I might add the clap first. Sometimes I might add the kick first. But 90% of the time, it's the hi-hat. Now I'm in my, my zone of, okay, let's add all the drums in it now. So after I add the hi-hat, I come on back and I, I add the clap. Now once you add the hi-hat and the clap, every rapper, every artist, what's gonna really get them excited or make them feel like, okay, I'm ready to go in the booth right now, stop making the beat, is when you add the drop. When you add the 808s, it's time to rap. I want to say most important sound in the beat. I didn't understand that until I got to Atlanta. And that became, you know, a, a major part of me making beats. If you listen to the beat now, it pretty much sound, you know, it sounds full, it sounds like it's ready to go. I work with artists like a Gucci Man or a Future or even Migos that, you know, they're impatient. When you're in the studio, once they start hearing something they like, 
okay, I'm ready to go in, I'm ready to go in the mic booth. I'm ready to rap. I don't want you to sit here for another 30 minutes making the beat because then I'm going to lose my energy. I'm going to lose what I had in my mind, what I wanted to say. So now it's like, hurry up, finish the beat so we can go ahead and do the song. I'm like, well, hold on, give me one more minute. You know, give me just one quick minute to add all these different little extra spices in it. So the next thing I added was a snare. The snares don't do nothing but enhance the movement. It's moving almost like how the hi-hat's moving. It just helps build the adrenaline. I always look at a song as in there's a verse and there's a chorus. In the music, something has to change when the chords come on. So it, it defines, okay, that's the chords and that's the verse. So I went on, I said, you know what, let me add this last sound, then this beat will be done. Even though this was the last sound that I put in the beat, I felt like it just made everything just gel together. It just made it complete. So now, after you know breaking down each instrument, and everything I put in the beat, and the reason why I put it in the beat. Let me give you what the grand finale sounds like. I feel like Lil Pump definitely follows the rock star image. You know, uh, it's almost like no cares in the world. And that's what, you know, that's the type of music that make other people feel good, other people that's, you know, probably have problems or got a, a nine to five and they stressed out. These are the artists that can kind of free them up and make them feel alive. So when they go out or when they listen to the music, they just feel pumped up and excited. That's definitely the new generation. Guys like that have respect for producers like me, you know, just the different generations coming together. And I think that's what makes it powerful. Diamonds dripping on me, feeling like a water faucet, bro. Niggas hating on me, man, this shit need to stop it. Woo.